call it the hun I think that that boy about to kill the gun Lyrical red rum in the bill like a lung 50% of I'm not even on my final phone My men in the wastes and I've been on my osmos jones Alright, so I decided to do this review because there aren't really videos out there that compare the three main games, which I feel like are the games that are just way above all the other games currently. Those games are SX4, All Out, and MXGP 2020. Nothing else really comes close to them in gameplay and everything else. And then the most current, like, I know some people are going to say Reflex and Unleashed are way better, but like, I'm gonna. I'm talking about current gen. Another thing that I like to add is that I've raced competitively in all three of these games, so I've kind of at one point grinded all these games. So I've had many hours into each one. I would say I have enough time into it to be able to say if the game is good or not and compare all the like strengths and weaknesses of each game, especially with all three. I'm gonna try to be as least biased as possible. I'm gonna try to show gameplay multiplayer, single player, and they just kind of cover anything else that makes the game special. So, hopefully you all like the video. Alright, so before we get into anything else about S Supercross the game before, I just want to talk about the menu screen and everything. So you got your career, and you got your single player stuff, like just the Monster Energy Cup, your championship trophies, your compound, you have your multiplier and your profile multiplier. Then you have like the eSport thing that they're doing right now, which I believe is ending soon actually. And then for the create, you got your track creator, which is really cool. And that's probably one of the main things that people like about this game. Then you also got your rider customization, and then you're just extra stuff. And when it comes to price, this game, I'm looking at GameStop right now, it's going for 30 bucks. But I, so since the game is almost like half a year old now, you can find it on sale some places it is a $60 game but if you get lucky you can find it for $30 $40 so for the physics in SX4 you're pretty locked in for most of what you can do you don't have much freedom in like the air and like on the ground like for whips they mainly just want you to it's like kind of a set whip you can do some whips on your own but like, you can't really get that creative with it I would say this game is mainly built for finding speed and rhythms and corners, which is really good for a competitive, which we'll get into, but it seems like there's some scuffed things too that you can do, like the fifth gear and the whoops thing. But other than that, the game is pretty good with physics, like it feels good, like you don't really get annoyed with the physics, you just kind of get used to them and then you can just learn how to go fast with them. So that's what I'll have to say about SX Force Physics. One point where this game shines is its career. Cause like, I'm playing it right now, and as you can see, like you have to start in low rank, and you have to build up, and you can get like badges and stuff for your guy to make him faster. And I feel like that if you don't really plan on playing online at all, this game could really be still really fun without having to play multiplayer or anything like that. Also along with single player, like by yourself, you can just do single events, you can do free ride. Free ride map isn't very big though, it's more of just like some tracks on a hill. Me and my friends messed around with it and we got kind of bored of with it in like an hour. So, but that's still there for you. And then also with single player, you'll get time trials. You can do new time trials, try to beat your times and everything like that, try to grind and get fast at the game. But honestly, the part where this game excels most is probably the competitive racing. Like, you can find racing leagues just anywhere, on any console. You just go on Instagram, you can, you can probably fill up your entire week with races, honestly. So, I feel like this game is probably the most competitive game out of any of the games we're going to go over. And if you're into that stuff, then this is definitely the game for you. Um, this game does have really cool customization. As you can see, I've used different bikes. It has the IRL brands and everything. You can pretty much make your bike look like it, you want it to look, just no matter what. So that's also really cool. Um, other than that, this game's community is really big, and it probably stays big 
It can be a little toxic at sometimes, like you know, you get cleaned out in public lobbies, but that's just how it is. You're gonna get that in any game, basically. So yeah, other than that, though, uh, that's S64 for you. It's just if you're gonna get a game like today, like if you want to buy a game today, this is definitely the game for you. It's the most recent game, most popular game, so it's definitely probably one of my favorite games to date so that's sx4 all right so mx is atv all out this game is actually probably my favorite one out of these three just because of how fun it is and it never gets old this game definitely excels with its free ride though because that's something that most games don't really have this is like an open world just go wherever you want type thing this Another thing that other games don't have that this game does is this game's got freestyle. So if you're a freestyle guy, this is definitely the kind of games for you. You can just throw knack knacks over jumps. It's just a super fun game to mess around on and play. Definitely like if you're just if you're not looking to play competitively, because competitive wise, there's only one tournament that I know of that still runs on this game. But if you're just looking for a game to mess around on, this is definitely the game for you. And since it is, it was released in 2018, you can find it for like 20 bucks pretty much anywhere. But the only downside about this game is it is pretty much DLC based. Pretty much everything you're going to get in this game is going to be DLCs. Like I'm on the free map that you get when the game comes out, but like the bike that I'm on is the Yamaha, which is a DLC. There's a bunch of DLC tracks. This one has actually the 2020 tracks, which is actually super sick. And I don't really mind DLCs for games. Like, I actually like them because it's better than just them releasing a new game and you having to buy an entirely new game. So I don't have much of a problem with the DLCs, but this game is just an insanely fun game to mess around on. When it comes to the physics of this game, it's very free and I think that's what makes the game as fun as it is because you can just throw massive whips over every jump and just do backflips and stuff like that so compared to SX4 and like MXGP you're gonna get way more free physics just gonna be able to throw more massive whips it's just I like the physics of this game the best because it allows for the most amount of skill gap because you can learn how to use the physics to your advantage it's just really fun. This is just an all-around fun game when it comes to physics. Because you can just learn to flow with tracks. The only thing is, when the ground is really bumpy, the physics in this game don't really work. So I guess that's a con there. And there's also some glitches, like where you can learn how to wheelie glitch and everything like that in this game. Which some people don't like, but I kind of like that. Because it allows for you to be able to use some skill to your advantage when it comes to racing. So yeah that's the physics for all out but then when you get to the menu you got your events your series and your single events and time trials and stuff like that the online for this game is pretty fun you can there aren't really as many lobbies as there used to be but you can still find many races the career for this game is actually really good you can as you can see, there's a bunch of different things, and as you get more, you unlock more events and stuff like that. So it's actually a super fun game. I would definitely recommend this one over pretty much both of the games if you're not looking to be competitive or anything. But you got all the 2020 tracks, so that's probably the best thing about this game. But yeah, other than that, the customization is pretty good. You can pretty much make your guy look however you want. So yeah, if you're looking to just kind of mess around and have some fun, this is definitely the game for you. But if you're looking to like play with friends and stuff like that competitively, not just like messing around, because if your friends get this game, it's super duper fun because you can just throw massive whips and do freestyle chains. But yeah, so this game is definitely up there. 
If you're looking to just mess around, this is the game for you. Alright, so MXGP. When this game first came out, it had many glitches and everything, and it just wasn't that fun to play. But then they made a patch for it. They released Track Editor, and the multiplayer got fixed and everything, and it just became a really fun game. I actually think it's underrated right now. It's got really nice graphics and everything. I think people just definitely need to put more time into it. But when you come to the physics of MXGP 2020, it is very similar to SX4, as it's made by the same company. But what you'll find out is a, it's a little bit more free and a little bit more touchy. In corners on SX4, you almost have to hold like the direction of the corner the entire time. But in this game, you kind of have to tap it almost. The whips in this game are basically the exact same as SX4. The bikes and everything are pretty much the same, but... Yeah, that's basically it for the physics of MXGP 2020. Still a really fun game though. This game is definitely underrated when it comes to physics. So for the career, you're just going to have the usual just race the, the replica tracks and everything. But then you got like a fun, like just outdoor area to just mess around on and everything. You got a track editor, multiplier, the customization. This game though is quite expensive. It doesn't really go on sale. So you're going to basically just have to pay the 50 bucks to get it. Which kind of stinks, but there aren't really any DLCs for it. So you kind of just get the full game when you do it. But yeah, that's kind of MXGP. There isn't really much to talk about. It doesn't have much for anything competitive or anything. It's more of just a game to have to pass time. Which might not really be up some people's alley or anything like that. But if you're just looking for a fun motocross substitute for Supercross the game, this is definitely the game for you. And I think you should definitely buy it because it does. it is really fun. And it's just a fun game in general. If you get your friends together and you all just play it, so... Yeah, well that's MXGP 2020.